My name is Josh Schardenberg, and I've been friends with Christian Sanchez for a long time. He's a cool guy, super smart, super chill, but one insanely interesting fact about him is that he's an incredible drone racer. He loves drone racing, so much so that he's constantly training to be the best. That got me thinking. I should document this. So I assembled my crew featuring Drew, Alex, and Zach. And we set out to meet Christian and shed light on this great community that surrounds this budding sport. So I got into drone racing um, back in like around 2018. That's when I got my first drone and I put it together and I did a lot of crashing and that's how I, I started learning, yeah. How much have you improved since you started? I started going to this place called the Dome. Uh, and when I first started, I would go there and I would see all these really fast pilots that were sponsored by companies. And I never thought it'd be uh, as good you know, as, as them. Around maybe two years ago is when I started making a lot of progress. This past summer is uh, when I finally became sponsored by uh, two companies. One of them is called Mobility Gates, and then the other one is called Good Venture Drones, uh, which finally made me feel like I was good enough as the other people that I looked up to when I first started. Currently, I believe I am ranked 150 something. At the beginning uh, of each, each season, MultiGP, which is the, the league that is currently in the U.S., it's kind of like what NBA is to basketball. They release a track that is universal and anyone can build it, uh, you know, in their own backyard or in a field. Um, and then they can practice on it. And then what they do is they host certain events where you bring your drones and you fly as fast as you can and they count your fastest three laps. Uh, they add them together and then they upload those to a website and that's how you qualify. And in that website then they sort them by order, who's fastest and who's slowest and that's how you get ranked. And then once you, uh, you qualify in like top 200 and you get sent to the championships, then you have a chance to move up that leaderboard and what you, whatever you place in the, the event is what your rank is in like the country. Uh, my ultimate goal is to be top 50 fastest pilot in the multi-GP league. So, uh, I will show you guys a bit of uh, what I do to practice, and we're going to go to the simulator. Um, so, follow me into my room. Uh, this is where a lot of my uh, virtual practicing happens right here. Um, so, I have this simulator called Velocidrone. And it's what a lot of the, the pilots use for off-season practice. Uh, typically, typically what I do is uh, I hook up to this uh, simulator here. Uh, i got to turn my radio on first. Welcome to OpenTX. And it's pretty fancy. It's got a USB port. We just connect it. And then I am ready to use it with a simulator here. Um, then I just clip it on to myself in my shirt. And that way, uh, I'm also very consistent uh, with where my controller is placed at all times. So whether I'm practicing here at home or I'm at a race, my radio is always going to be in the same exact position. Um, so now, basically, I just enter a match, and uh, and we can see some uh, some practicing here. Whoa, and then I crash there. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, do you want to try, Josh, to see if uh, yeah, I'll see how well we can do? Cool. So here's the okay. controller. Basically, um, do I, should I have the strap? Like, yeah, if you want the strap, that works too. You probably recommend the strap, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can put. Uh, yeah, I'll put this on. There we go. Uh, and then you just clip it on. All right. So the left stick is is your your throttle. Okay. Um, 
that's how you go up, and then these over oh, here gosh. are to control it. This is, this is hard. How do you think you did, Josh? Uh, I suck. Watching Christian fly in the simulation, as well as trying it myself, was pretty cool. But we didn't want just simulations. We wanted the real deal. So we packed our things and drove to a park to get the full flight experience. Needless to say, that real deal was an awesome experience, but we weren't just going to stop there. We were hungry for more, so we set out to capture more of the drone racing community. We wanted to check out the nightlife. Is this for drone racing? Yeah, uh -huh. and eight. Yeah. When we got there, we were greeted by a small lightning storm, as you can see. But we were also greeted by the super nice guy okay. who was setting up these weird square uh -oh. gates. His name is Billy, <laughs> but you may also know him as Mobili Gates. Mobili's role is super integral to the drone racing community. He creates and prepares a lot of vibrant gates that are used in races. It's safe to say he's good at his work, and it shows like how he managed to turn an empty parking lot into a challenging time attack. Shortly after the track was set up, the racers began appearing. Not a big crowd, but a fun one. Mobili had them all line up their drones, and the fun began. Watching these guys fly, I thought, this just looks so easy, what's the challenge? But Christian's voice came out of nowhere and reminded me of this. The biggest challenges of this sport are probably the consistency. Um, we have a saying, smooth is fast. Consistency is key. And it's basically because these drones are so delicate that uh, even a small crash can destroy the whole thing. So if someone is able to fly very consistently, then that means that they're able to excel and, and practice more rather than fix more. Uh, so the, the thing that we want to get is maximum uh, flight time, maximum practice time rather than just being fixing drones all the time. Okay, so drone crashes do sound pretty scary and intense, but watching them, they're pretty awesome. Oh. Oh. One thing I couldn't help but notice while watching these guys was that they always attributed piloting drones to being like, well, normal human beings. After a fall, they'd always know when to get back up and clear the gate on the next try. It was such a fun night getting to know these interesting people. The community is always expanding, and hanging out with them really showed off their tight-knit core. 
we got to interview one of these awesome individuals to gain more insight about the community. So how did you get into drum racing? Uh, so actually, I started with drones mainly just flying for real estate, taking pictures, um, things like that. And then uh, I saw, it was a YouTube video of these guys who were racing little tiny drones. They call them tiny whoops. I was like, I got to have that. Just to be able to like sit in my house and just build a little track and race through the track was like such a cool idea. And uh, so that was kind of my introduction. What is your, what's your favorite part of drone racing? Really the, I mean, friends coming out and hanging out with people. Like the competition, like it's it's fun more so than like cutthroat. Uh, like we want to beat each other, of course, but like at the same time, we're all buddies and we just get to hang out for the night and relieve some stress and and like just work on our skills. Like we just love a lot of us. You ask anyone, you just love that feeling of seeing your time like slowly drop down. There's like a satisfaction level that you get with just that constant improvement, it's just like anything. There's always a satisfaction that comes with that. How did you meet Chess? Uh, I actually met him out here pretty recently. Um, I have actually known about him for a while just because he's a very talented racer. I had to see him fly in person too and I was like, Holy cow, this guy's really fast. <laughs> it's super, but uh, you know, it's cool because when you get to be around someone like that, it helps you too. Like you get to learn, you get to learn tips and tricks from someone like that and it helps you improve. So as far as drone racing, like, you know, if you're ever interested, you join for the community, like, you know, find people on Facebook, find people on whatever medium you, you might use. And uh, people are super open to helping people get up in the air. Uh, we're always willing to help f find a way, whether it's parts, whatever it is, to, for people to have a good time. So and that's really what it's mainly about, is having a good time. Being in the air as opposed to just having constant problems. So, yeah. That's cool. Yep. It was interesting to hear Connor mention how Christian's attitude and commitment helped him and pushed him to be the same way. Clearly, Christian's had a major influence on this group of racers, but he's also influenced people much closer to him. So what are your thoughts about uh, drone racing as a sport? Well, drone racing is, uh, I think it's an amazing uh, sport because it shows the capabilities of the human brain to react that's, I think that's an impressive uh, sport. Yeah. What are your thoughts about uh, Christian drone racing? Well, it has been a, a journey because, uh, you know, while he's been training for, for races, uh, he's been practicing all over the place, including inside the house, even outside the house, around the house. I feel like there's a story to this. There's got to <laughs> be a story to this. Yeah, so... Um, and like I said, it's pretty amazing how he uh, controls the drone. Uh, it's really impressive. Uh, like I said, I enjoy watching those things uh, um, in spite or, uh, you know, of, of the noise that sometimes, you know, sometimes it's, it's late, you know, we are in bed and we hear the drone and or sometimes it's very early or we see our cat following the drone. So that's, you know, that's that's really good. <laughs> Did you ever like think Christian would be like serious about like uh, pursuing li like drone racing? I didn't think so, uh, but as as I was seeing how he um, uh, how much money he was spending on parts and and tools and uh, all everything that he needed to to uh, compete. That's when I realized that he was really serious about, uh, you know, racing or this sport. And he has learned many things in the course of, you know, this, this uh, sport. You know, he has learned how to solder. He has learned how to 3D printing. Um, that's just to name some of those things. Yeah. What's your favorite thing about watching Christian fly? Oh, he's... Uh, 
his enjoyment, you know, his uh, energy mm -hmm. to to be in, in in this, you know, this sport. Yeah. This is another thing that I see is very um, beneficial for him. Uh, he he has been uh, applying what he knows about uh, drones to this other um, academic uh, field as well. And I think he's also trying to pass his knowledge about, about drones to other people. That's, that's also very important for, uh, for him. Christian had one last event to show us, a racing event that really showed his skill and determination. And it all took place here at a bowling alley called Pinstripes. We're at a drone race here, uh, racing this, this little guy right here. And uh, I, we, we work by heats, and I'm heat sick, so I'm like the last person to go. And yeah, I'm just gonna try to put in my fastest time I can. Those obstacles right there. learning the track. Um, I think I put an old battery on my drone where I didn't finish the first lap, but then someone let me borrow a second battery. The second lap I got maybe like 30, 31 seconds. Um, so right now that's the, the fastest right now, the, the race to the whole thing, uh, 30 seconds. So we'll see if I can improve. I'm shooting for 20 seconds. Sub 20 might be nice. Okay. I feel like that, that's going to be what my max is going to be. Christian had set himself a personal goal time of sub 20 seconds. I set a goal for myself too. Get some really cool footage of drones. This was it. This was the best event I had gone to during Christian's off-season. All because it showcased everything that made drone racing, drone racing. Custom-built drones, bright neon gates, and several people with goggles flying around. Competition, community, and fun. Without these factors, drone racing would never be the up-and-coming sport it is today. For a newcomer, this was paradise. For Christian, this was home. Finally, it was time for Christian's final race of the night. This is where he was to make sub 20 seconds. Relief washed over him. He crossed the finish line and smiled. He completed the race in no less than first place, as expected. Very last seat I 
did. I got a 20 point something. I got two laps where I got a 21, and then the last one was 20.6, I believe. I was so close. So close to sub 20. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything else went pretty well. I was very consistent. Uh, I'm pretty proud of how I did today, just kind of practicing. Just a, it's just a fun fly, just practicing around and having some fun here. Next time around, we'll, we'll try to do better. Any other concluding thoughts? Uh, no, not really. Just uh, just having fun out here, that's all. That's what it's about. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Being out here and having fun. Yeah, I'm really proud. Um, I think uh, like the moment that I started winning races consistently, it's when I was very proud of myself. So like a big milestone for me was like being sponsored or being part of the, a team. And then obviously a lot of people will also look forward to like bigger things. They'll be like, okay, now I'm gonna win the championship or now I'm gonna win this certain race that a certain pilot wins every year. Uh, but for me, I'm actually not sure what my next goal is. Probably to keep improving, uh, be faster, but a specific goal I'm not sure yet, yeah. Chez, I would just love to see him just keep pushing. Um, like, I know he's super focused on school and stuff like that right now, but like, I would love to see him keep pushing down the path of like drone racing and all that. The moment that I realized that drone racing made me happy was probably my first uh, race, just because uh, I loved the like adrenaline that I got uh, from racing other people. And it, I just found it very rewarding, even though at the very at the very beginning I was not winning many races. I was mostly crashing out, and when you crash out, you're basically done because the drones just break. Um, but I just found it very rewarding to to just race. Uh, as a parent, we want our kids to have our kids involved in any in sports. Uh, but this specific uh, case has, uh, for me, I think it's important that he he um, is into that because he will learn and will apply and apply that in school and later probably in in a, in a job. If someone has a passion, or if someone has multiple passions and they want to choose one, I think my advice would be uh, to just choose the thing that makes them the happiest. Um, I know like in high school I was also doing cross country, uh, but it's just something that I was not as passionate about as like drone racing or any other things. Um, and I just kind of went off of like, okay, what makes me feel the best? And drone racing made me feel very good, so. No, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got, yeah. Okay. Cool.